The Texas of Canada has just released a very exciting passenger rail master plan that seeks to set out a series of priority corridors, as well as the creation of a provincial agency that can coordinate projects with public and private partners. While cynics were quick to come out of the woodwork to complain that any progress short of actually doing something we haven't done yet is meaningless, I mean, come on, plans are for suckers. People generally seem taken aback. What if Canada's Texas had high-speed rail between its biggest cities before Texas, Texas? The race is on. I mean, the Premier was talking about how untenable the idea of building eight or ten lane highways across the province's beautiful landscapes would be, which is kind of amazing. But maybe we shouldn't be surprised that a Premier who formerly owned a restaurant in a train car would be into the idea of more trains. Now, there are a lot of projects that are in the plan, from regional routes into Calgary and Edmonton from surrounding cities, air rail links, the Banff-Calgary connection that can hopefully save Canada's nicest park from becoming a parking lot, and intercity routes from Calgary to Edmonton and perhaps all the way up to Fort Mac. I've heard shock that the province would unveil such bold plans, but the reality is that Alberta is growing extremely fast. As the speakers mentioned at the announcement, this is a multi-decade generational plan. It's not all going to happen overnight, but making a plan is really valuable. The Conservatives have put the ideas out there and put them on the map, and people are going to run with them. And as I've said before, this kind of master planned approach is the right one. It's fiscally responsible because you don't have to build everything right away, but you set aside the land so that future construction is more affordable, kind of like with the light rail systems in Calgary and Edmonton. Canada is a huge place, but fortunately that's mostly irrelevant to discussions of intercity passenger rail, since the corridors where trains would actually travel are fairly dense. Thanks to their size and proximity, high-speed rail between Edmonton and Calgary just makes common sense. But since in 2024 I've still heard the media talking about the potential for Hyperloop between the cities, a technology that doesn't exist anywhere in commercial service, I thought it was time for me to do a video on the topic. So I can talk about the things I think planners and politicians should be thinking about as they pursue this fantastic generational opportunity. And for the record, what is the most ambitious rail plan in Canada? Welcome to RM Transit, a channel about railways in Canada and around the world. The core problem Edmonton to Calgary Rail seeks to solve is getting people between the cities in a fast, convenient, affordable, and environmentally conscious way. Building a train is of little use if it's just a tourist service that few people ride, which is why it needs to be fast, frequent, and affordable. There shouldn't be a luxury travel option, but the best way to get between the Rocky Mountain parks, Alberta's big cities, and smaller communities, as well as the airports. And while this video is mostly focused on the intercity service, I do want to say that the regional service is both good and important to the entire proposition. Not only for getting people on board literally, but also politically. Because people rarely want to support a vision that they won't actually directly benefit from. The nice thing about regional train services, which I unfortunately heard getting labeled commuter, is that they can feed into a network of other services. Someone from Okotoks can take a train into Calgary and then transfer to another train that takes them to Banff or Edmonton or even just the airport. They free up highway capacity for goods transport, save money, and get linked up to so many of the province's amenities without having to spend hours behind the wheel. Regional rail isn't a new idea in Canada either. Montreal is building its automated REM regional train system, and just yesterday I was riding a GO train through the Toronto suburbs at 140 km per hour while scrolling my emails. It's just a way better way to get around for the long journeys that are sometimes required when you have sprawling suburbs. And maybe you're not going into the city to connect to another train, but to go to a sports game, or an event, or to the airport. Now today, people have three main options for going between Calgary and Edmonton. Flights, which are not all that affordable, not all that convenient, and certainly not environmentally friendly. Buses, which are less sexy, less fast, and more liable to get stuck in traffic, not to mention always hanging on the edge of oblivion. And while driving is driving, traffic, stress, traffic, gas, traffic, insurance, traffic, nightmare. So a real option is really compelling. 
Now, the journey from Calgary to Edmonton is about 280 kilometers, and on the way you get to hook up to Red Deer, Leduc, and Airdrie, as well as a number of smaller communities that people often don't think about. For some communities along the line, new rail service will obviously mean new, affordable, transit-oriented development. But for all of the communities, it will mean that you don't have to move to the big city to get all of the big city amenities, which are increasingly concentrated in the cities. Whether that be access to cutting-edge hospitals, or universities, or the airports. Now, I do think it's worth noting that it is crazy that VIA hasn't built something on this corridor. Growing up in Western Canada, I get people's frustration with a train service that basically only operates to a few communities like three times a week. I don't think I ever saw a VIA logo in the wild growing up in suburban Metro Vancouver until I traveled to Halifax and saw their VIA rail station. And of course, VIA doesn't even touch Calgary at all. It's just kind of hard to get people on board with paying for something that they have probably never used. What's great about the corridor is that it also allows for natural connections to both the Calgary and Edmonton airports, which are between the cities. For the airports, as I talked about in a video really not that long ago, rail connections would be a game changer. But high-speed rail would be a revolution, because people in both cities would suddenly have their airport market expand to two airports, giving you a second airport option with potentially cheaper flights and more destinations. And the airports would be wise to develop offices and other uses near the stations on the airport lands, kind of like you see in Germany. This could allow them to create additional revenue streams that would let them bring down landing fees and make Calgary and Edmonton's airports more competitive. The most basic way to connect the airports up would obviously be light rail or people mover connections from the closest point on the new line to the airport terminals themselves. But I think aiming higher is a great idea, especially if we're doing a master planned long term vision. And because using rail to get to the airport is obviously more attractive if you don't need to ride another train to get between the train and the plane. What's nice is that any new rail line between Calgary and Edmonton should have enough capacity to provide a 15 minute airport express type service between the airports and their respective cities, while still operating half hourly or better intercity service, preserving lots of capacity for the long term. You could even do what Hong Kong and some other world class cities do and let people check their luggage right in the downtown core so that they could hang out downtown for a few hours before catching their flight later in the day. Fortunately, both airports have tons of land to play with, including surface parking lots right near the terminal buildings. These surface parking lots could be excavated cut and cover style to build beautiful rail stations that could have offices and shopping centers on top, linked by cheap spur tunnels like the one just recently built under the Montreal airport's runways to connect them to the main line. This is exactly the type of approach you see in cities like Berlin and Oslo with their airports. And before you say, Oslo? Oslo has way less people in it than either Calgary or Edmonton, so clearly if they can do it, these cities can as well. At the very least, since this is a master plan, the airports and province can start assembling the land and putting together plans. I do want to reiterate though that a tunnel for long distance and express trains to the airport with an underground station at the terminal doesn't have to be super expensive. Actually building the tunnels with tunnel boring machines isn't all that expensive, and if you can build the station cut and cover, it's not bad. Now, I've talked a lot before about how Toronto should do something like this with a direct rail line through the airport and beyond to places like Brampton, and it would be hilarious if Calgary and Edmonton beat the city to the punch. If you followed this at all historically, you might go, well, the airlines will never want this. But I'd actually disagree. Airlines still exist in Europe and in Asia where high-speed rail is the norm, and many would argue they're better and more competitive for it. In reality, if rail was handling most of the traffic on the Calgary-Edmonton corridor, then the airlines could focus on more profitable, longer distance flights. Which if you've been watching the fact that WestJet now flies to Paris and Tokyo at all, you'll know they're already doing. Looking at the main rail line itself, you'd want a mostly double track corridor with some sections of more tracks to allow for express trains heading from the north of Calgary to the south of Edmonton. Having those short sections of overtake tracks are critical because they allow you to both have fast service between Calgary and Edmonton as well as direct service that connects into lots of little communities. What's really nice about the corridor is that it's pretty flat and not all that heavily developed, so building a new, fast passenger rail line should be fairly simple and cost effective. You might ask about using existing freight tracks, but that runs the risk of eating into capacity from Canadian National and Canadian Pacific. And it would also mean dangerous level crossings and tracks which aren't up to snuff, either geometry or quality wise, for higher speed passenger service. And that raises a question, how fast is fast? I think with Calgary and Edmonton, the temptation and the way that most people talk about it is full high speed rail, 320 kilometers per hour. But I think that's neither necessary or advisable. 
It's more expensive, it requires wider curves, and the reality is that the distance between Calgary and Edmonton is not that significant, and neither city is that gigantic. Paris, Barcelona, Lyon, Madrid, Osaka, they're all much larger cities than Calgary or Edmonton. So I think the correct solution is something between 200 and 250 kilometers per hour, slower than conventional modern high-speed rail, but similar in speeds to the Northeast Corridor in the US, and faster than anything we have today in Canada. That would allow you to do the downtown to downtown trip way faster than driving or taking the bus, and it would be time competitive with flying. A train would also offer you a ton of predictability and travel time consistency, because trains run just as fast when it's snowing. And the better economics with several hundred people seated on each train would mean that ticket prices could come down. Planning for intercompatibility is also critical. If Alberta is going to be building more and more rail, you want a train to be able to seamlessly go from one line to another without having any problems, both for purposes of operational flexibility, but also so that you can buy a common set of trains that can operate anywhere. To be honest, right now, intercompatibility of North American railways is patchy at best, so you really want to think about things like platform heights and signaling, which should be built to open international standards as opposed to a bespoke North America-only system. And because the decisions made for a line like Calgary-Edmonton will have knock-on effects on future rail projects, you want to think very carefully. You want to design the stations so that they have enough tracks for all your planned service, but also for express trains. Now, while between the cities, I don't think passenger and freight trains should interact, getting into the cities, freight operators are much more important. Or more specifically, land along their existing freight corridors and yards. Fortunately, there's always basically a ton of land available where you can shift freight tracks over and then include two additional passenger tracks while maintaining all of the existing freight infrastructure. That's especially true compared to the tight spaces where you're seeing Toronto currently upgrade from one to two, three, or sometimes four tracks. What's in it for the freight companies though? Well, perhaps they could be made partners in the project, making it clear the role they played in enabling it. But at the same time, while you're building the new passenger infrastructure into the cities, you can upgrade their infrastructure and corridors as well, including removing level crossings. On the Calgary side, it's really easy. Passenger tracks stay north and west of CPs from downtown all the way up to the airport, which kind of amazingly wouldn't interact with any sidings. A future airport tunnel connecting to a station right at the terminal could be built using a flyover and a tunnel starting in some industrial lands near the airport. Edmonton is trickier. I've heard people suggest terminating in Strathcona before, but I think that's a poor choice. A big benefit of the train is the downtown to downtown walkable pedestrian transit oriented connection, and Strathcona isn't even on Edmonton's LRT network. Fortunately, there's a solution that doesn't need to cost very much that would provide an excellent connection within Edmonton. Heading into the city, you can once again follow CP's tracks and stay to the west of them, where once again, there aren't any sidings you'd have to interact with. You might sometimes have to shift CP's infrastructure over, but there should always be enough room to maintain it without having to impact it at all. There are a few level crossings, and these could be removed, benefiting both passenger and freight trains. When you get to around 79th Avenue, you build a trench along the old rail right of way. And the local community gets the level crossings removed and a nice linear park along the trench. And, in case you're wondering, which I'm sure some people will be, the high-level streetcar could absolutely be maintained. Finally, you'd rebuild the one parking structure that goes over the corridor with a tunnel fit for three tracks, one for the streetcar, two for intercity trains, and then you relocate a short section of 109th Street and build a new bridge which can carry both trains and road traffic over the valley. In downtown, you build an elevated four-track terminal similar to the one Brightline uses in Miami, and potentially with transit-oriented development on top. While this work might sound complex, a few level crossing removals, shifted tracks, a rebuilt parking structure, a trench, and a bridge really aren't that big of a deal for getting trains into your city center. In fact, many cities would love to have it be that simple. And for the price of admission, you get high quality rail connections from the edge of Edmonton and Calgary to your new high-speed rail line. You're probably curious if there's a particular model this line should be built on. And yes, there is, it's Brightline in Florida, which Alberta politicians should really be booking flights to to go check out. In a lot of ways, I think Brightline Florida sets the standard for what you'd want to aim for technically. You have nice stations, double track, high platforms, nice trains, and service every hour, half hour, or even better. You also have a brand new fully grade separated high speed section running along the Beachline Expressway from the coast to Orlando, which is a great model for a similar high speed line that could be built along the QE2. 
And you might even get a lot of the grade separation on the line for free if you build it in the median, like Brightline is doing with its second line between Las Vegas and suburban LA. The only real change I would make is electrifying the entire line like we see with the second Brightline route. Electrifying is more cost up front, but it's lower cost forever, with trains that are more reliable, require less maintenance, and last way longer. But I think we can go even further than Brightline. The government should consider a partnership with WestJet and potentially Air Canada to allow code sharing between flights and rail. If I book a flight from Toronto or Calgary to Cologne in Germany, it will actually be a flight to Frankfurt and then a high-speed rail connection on the last leg to Cologne. And you can imagine a similar setup in Alberta, where someone flying from, say, Japan or London to Edmonton would first fly to Calgary and then get on a high-speed train for their last leg. Serious thought should also be given to open access operations, like you're starting to see in other parts of the world. This is where the government creates a market in terms of the rails and the stations, and then different operators can compete to provide affordable and convenient services. And I really think that's key. To a large extent, the Alberta government should fund the infrastructure, but other parties can fund operations. At the very least, I'm sure Via Rail and the federal government would fund running Via trains between Edmonton and Calgary like they should have decades ago, and these trains would finally actually be able to operate at their top speed. All in all, the project should be affordable because of the relatively simple urban approaches and the big wide open right of way between them. There would be lots of capacity to run loads of trains providing affordable service, as well as the creation of a big new intercity rail market in Canada. And of course, GHG emissions would also come down. For the airports, it's great because they can move up the value chain, providing less short hop flights between local cities and more international ones that are higher value. This should be something that we build, but not in five decades, in like five years. If Toronto and Montreal are going to get a new train, it's time Calgary and Edmonton got a train. Thanks for watching.